Greetings everybody and today we're going to be evaluating the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x to the n over x dx where n is some non-zero real number. So before we jump into the solution of this integral I want to prove one cool thing. It's a bit of a generalization but I want to show that if we have the integral um, from 0 to infinity of f of x to the n over x dx uh, so f can be anything, in this case it's sine, uh, so long as this integral converges. I claim that we can rewrite this integral as 1 over the absolute value of n times the integral from 0 to infinity of f of x over x dx. And the nice thing with rewriting this integral into this form is that the integrand is independent of n, and that makes most integrals are a lot nicer to evaluate, especially this integral, um, because if we don't have an n right here, then we're just evaluating the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x, which is pi over 2, and I've evaluated that many times in this channel using complex analysis and Laplace transforms and all that. Um, so yeah, we know the integral of sine of x over x quite well. So I want to prove this right now. So in order to show that this is true, we're just going to be using some basic integration substitution stuff. So we're going to let a new variable, let's call it t, be equal to x to the n. So let t be equal to x to the n, which means that dt is equal to n times x to the n minus 1 dx. So just some basic um, power rule. And let's split up this x to the n minus 1 a little bit. So dt is now equal to n times x to the n times x to the minus 1 dx. But notice x to the minus 1 is the same thing as the 1 over x. And also notice that x to the n, well, that's our t as we defined. So we have nt times 1 over x times dx. And this is really nice because notice in our integral, we have a dx and a 1 over x. Same deal over here, we have a dx and a 1 over x, so let's try to isolate that, and we're going to divide both sides by n times t. So now we have that dt over nt is equal to 1 over x dx. And now we can plug it in. So let's go over here. So now we're going to have the integral, and we're going to worry about the, the bounds later on, but let's just plug everything in. We have f, now x of x to the n is exactly our t, so f of t, and then dx divided by x, which is this thing over here, we know that's dt divided by nt. So we have dt divided by nt. And now how about our bound? This is a little bit tricky to do because we kind of have to consider a, consider a couple cases. First of all, if you take the case that n is zero, um, well, this isn't going to work out too well. That's why we excluded zero in the beginning. And the reason for that is if you plug zero into here, then you're going to get x to the zero, which is just a one. So inside of our function, we just have f of one. So you're evaluating the function at one, which is just a constant. And you're left with the integral from zero to infinity of one over x dx, which diverges. So we don't really want zero um, as a value for our n which means that n is either positive or n is negative. So we have, a, have to do a bit of casework because our bounds will change depending on which sign our n, n takes. So let's do case one over here. So case one is if n is positive. What happens if n is positive? Well, if you plug zero into here, or well, zero to any positive number is zero. And if we plug infinity into this x, then infinity to any uh, positive real number is also infinity. So for case one, if n is positive, our bounds are quite nice, but how about case two, if n is negative? Some different things will actually happen because if n is negative, then let's, for example, um, if we let uh, n be equal to minus k, where k is, um, a positive real number, then what do we have? We have that t is exactly um, x to the minus k, which is 1 over x to the k. And remember, k is a positive real number. And if you plug 0 into this x, then you're going to get 1 over 0, which is undefined, so it's infinity. And if you 
plug infinity into this x, well, if you take the limit as x approaches infinity, well, since k is positive, then this denominator will just keep growing and you're just going to approach zero. So in fact, for case at two, our bounds will be a little bit different because if you plug zero in, you're going to get infinity. And if you plug infinity into the substitution, you're going to get zero. And then you're still going to get the same thing on the inside, so f of t over n times t dt. All right, so case two, that was if n is negative. So let's continue on a little bit. So now this is equal to one over n. So I'm just pulling this n out to the front. One over n times the integral from zero to infinity of f of t over t dt. And let's do the same thing over here. And we're also going to switch the bounds because we don't really want to integrate um, the other way. It's kind of weird. So let's switch the bounds first of all by introducing a negative. And then we also bring out this one over n, so minus one over n times the integral from zero to infinity of f of t divided by t dt. All right, so if you take a look at case one, n is positive. Um, so that means whatever is outside is positive, which is nice. But if you look at case two, n is negative. So if n is negative, we also have a negative outside, which turns whatever is outside to a positive. So we can kind of combine these two cases together um, and just say that, well, that's what we have over here, because if n is positive, then the absolute value kind of keeps everything positive. And if n is negative, we have this extra negative sign from the um, reorientation of the integral. So in fact, putting the absolute value right here kind of combine these two cases together, which is quite nice. So that's how you prove this little um, identity. So now with that out of the way, that makes our job of solving our initial integral quite easy because all we have to do is we let um, f of x be equal to sine of x and we get now that the integral from zero to infinity of sine of x to the n over x and dx that's exactly equal to one over the absolute value of n times the integral from zero to infinity of sine of x over x dx and we know what the value of this integral is that's exactly pi over 2 so in the end we get 1 over the absolute value of n times pi over 2 or you can rewrite this as I guess pi over 2 times the absolute value of n where n is a real number excluding 0 so a couple of nice observations about this you can have n being negative and if you take a look on Desmos on this function on Desmos, if n is negative, then you have some graph that's um, nice and smooth and whatnot. And then as you get closer to the origin, it goes completely wild and somehow this integral still converges, which is um, quite interesting. And um, another, another nice thing is that if n is odd, I believe, yes, if n is odd, then since you have an odd function inside of here, and one over x is also odd, then your integrand becomes an even function. So if your integrand is even, then what you can do, um, you can use some symmetries to show that um, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of sine of x to the n, sine of x to the n over x in dx is equal to just a pi over the absolute value of n. So you can get rid of, rid of this too. And this is for, um, n being odd. And if n is even, then this integral actually evaluates to zero because um, the integrand is an odd function and you're integrating across symmetric bounds. And if your n is fractional in some cases, then it's not even defined for the left-hand side. Um, so you can only integrate from zero to infinity. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all for this video. This is a nice um, integral identity that you can use for, I believe, some other integrals as well. There's some other applications there. Um, but yeah, Hope you guys enjoyed this video, have a wonderful day, and I'll see everyone later. Bye bye.